This video is a continuation of the jack-o'-lantern tutorial series. If you missed the first video on the supplies, I will put a link up in the corner there. Go check it out and then come back here and let's work on the sketch. All right, my paper and my reference are cropped, composed, and gridded, and I am ready to go on the sketch. I've chosen just a couple of oranges to go kind of with the major color scheme I've seen there. If you want a tutorial on how I do my grids, leave me a comment down below and I will make that happen. All right, speeding this up to five times normal speed. My goal at this point is just to capture the basic shapes. No details. Um, it's really hard. I love details. I find myself getting into them too easily, but right now all I want is those bigger shadow shapes, rough shapes that I can refine later. All right, the sketch is coming along. I've come in with a little darker colored pencil just to emphasize the edges of things that I don't want to lose. You don't have to do this. I just, the time felt that that was what I wanted to do. Once your sketch gets to a point where you feel comfortable, if those grid lines are kind of visually bothering you, take a kneaded eraser and lighten them. It may not remove them all, but it will definitely make them a little less visible. If you want to lighten them a little further, a sanded eraser is your best friend. It will mar the paper a little bit, but with the process we're going to use, that won't matter. Now, once you've got your lines down and you feel like you've got enough information, it doesn't have to be everything, but now you can come back in with your colored pencil and start filling in those really dark values here. We're not going to put in the darkest darks or the lightest lights. We're just starting to add some value to what we're trying to create. Quick note about technique. Use the side of your pencil lead and a fairly relaxed grip to get a medium to light layer of colored pencil pigment on your paper. You can always come back and do another layer if you want to see it darker. Once you feel like you've got your sketch to where you want it, remember you don't need all the details, mostly just the shadow shapes. Grab some water, a brush, and your pigment. Get your paper wet. I find this just helps spread the pigment a little better, less streaky, even though the streaks really don't matter. Give your pigment a shake and drip it on. I'm using two different pigments, pigments to approximate another color. You can use just one and just start smoothing it on. I love this intense golden yellow. I'd almost want to stop right there and uh, call it done. But no, I'm going to continue on. All right, it's time to add some texture. Grab your cleaned brush and your clear gesso after the ink is dried, of course. And you're just going to drip this on and smooth it around. I like to make it as smooth as possible. Maybe you want some texture and you can do brushing in all directions. All right, removing these schmutz you see as you're brushing this on. But once you get it to a point where it's as smooth as you think you can get it, it's time to let it dry. I usually let it dry for overnight. Depending on the weather where you are, it may take over an hour. Next step, we'll be blocking in the colors with soft pastels.